First of all, take a good look at this sponge. When a zoologist looks at this, this is not a sponge. This is some piece of manufactured work. This is chemically digested cellulose, plant material that's been digested, broken down, and then what you do is bubble air through it. So when it forms and solidifies, you get something that we look at called a manufactured sponge. What about real sponges? What are real sponges? What do they look like? Well, in the waters of New Zealand, this image shows several species of sponges. And those are those bright orange and reddish colored splotches that you see in this image right here. Now, sponges themselves are the simplest of the many-celled animals. And one of the common species in New Zealand, and we'll use this as a focus to understand what sponges are, is the finger sponge. And you can see it right here. It is an upright sponge. It looks almost like the fingers of a hand. It attaches, not with a root. Remember, these are animals. They are not plants. These are animals. It attaches onto a rock substrate, and it basically moves in the water. It's not very rigid, but it certainly has hardness to the structure. Now, if we took a close-up at the surface of the sponge, we'd find out that it had many, many, many small holes. Why the small holes? Well, this is what a sponge is all about. Unlike a plant who can get its own food by harnessing the energy of sunlight, what a sponge does is it extracts particles of food from water and it throws its waste back out. That all occurs in tiny chambers that are right behind the holes of a sponge. And here's a microscopic view of one of those chambers. So we have a chamber right here. You could notice that we have cells that are extending into the chamber that look like they have long hairs. Those hairs, those whips, those flagella, what they can do is that they can work and move water. So they can move the fresh water that has food into the body, and they can move the stale water, the water that has metabolic waste, out. Well, what kind of food do sponges feed upon? Well, they feed upon tiny bits of plankton. So the plankton comes in those openings. You know what? We get to do a little bit of theater right now. What I want you all to do, everyone, take one hand, place it up like this. Together, we're all gonna go in this direction and then that way. Take a look around. Whoa, oh, this is great. You right now look like the inside lining of a sponge chamber because if there was beach balls or water on top of you, you'd be having particles of food that would be moving in due to your movement and they would be absorbed by the sponge body. And that is how a sponge makes its living. Now, in the water, the finger sponge might look like this, a brilliant yellow color. Those other sponges looked red, they looked orange. However, when you find sponges on the beach, they will be bleached out. They will look something like this. So here is another finger sponge. This is a dried up skeleton. You can see how hand-like that looks. Very, very bizarre. One thing about sponges, if you're wondering what that is, is it really a sponge? You can pick it up and you can smell it because sponges stink. Even though they've been on the beach for a week, a half a week, you will be able to, and that is a giveaway that what you're looking at is a sponge. But the main thing is looking for those holes that are on the body. A spongy type skeleton is left behind after the animal dies. Okay. That's our first group of invertebrates. Uh, is this a good page?